Seattle, nothing happens. <laughs> First on the agenda is a reading of the previous minutes. Is there any addition or corrections? Can I have the board approval? I have a motion to uh, accept. Second. Second. I second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, presentations of the bills and accounts. Any additions or corrections? No. Motion to accept? Motion. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, first on the agenda is the liability insurance. So we're at a uh, presentation by John Wire Green. No, it's not like the middle there. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I have visuals. Oh. Ah. Ah. Boring reading material. We just add, we have John kind of give us a brief overview because this is the time of year when I'm asked to sign off on the values of all our buildings and things and you know we don't ever insure them at your full replacement costs and there's a real good reason for that and it might be easier John to explain that. Sure. Um, so the, we've had the fortune of writing the Water Department's property and casualty insurance for quite some time. Uh, the renewal is October 1st every year for that. Um, and it has, was everyone on the board last year? There are some new people. So last year, so last year the um, board sent the property and casualty insurance out to bid. So there was a consultant who came through to obtain information and uh, in turn gave that information to a number of agents to quote and compete for the insurance. So we were part of that as the incumbent and um, um, the companies for the department may have changed over the years in terms of the insurance company that we've had the coverage through. Uh, and because of the bid process last year, um, there was quite a bit of savings, premium savings. Yeah, uh, we switched companies. And switch companies, right. Real well for it. So, and, and that's always a good process to go through to, to basically check, check on uh, where things are. So, um, I have our copy of last year's policy. If anyone has any questions, details about uh, the coverages. I also have, I don't know how much time I have. Okay. So, I've kind of highlighted a number of things to... Uh, to look at. Um, primarily there is a, uh, the renewal quote is in, I just received it yesterday. Um, the premium change for the 2017 to 18 term is about $1,400 higher than last year, which is really um, fairly minimal in terms of, of uh, how, as renewals go. There's been some changes that affect that renewal premium. One is the uh, payroll uh, has increased. Um, I'll get to that in a second. Um, there have been some vehicle changes. There was some older 2008 vehicles that were moved off the policy and then some 2016 and 17s that were added on. Those having a higher um, physical damage value then changed the premium somewhat. Mm -hmm. um, the building values will go up every year as with uh, same as your homeowner's policy because you want to follow for inflation on material and labor costs every year. Um, I'll get back to that in a second as well because that was affected by the bid as was the payroll um, last year. The, those are both affected by the bid process. Um, so during the bid process, um, basically all the work that has been done for a few years gets opened up and um, the consultant goes through and obtains information at that moment in time. Um, it was his decision to go with some slightly higher building values than, than were on the expiring policy, but still the premium went down. So I'll take that any day. We got more coverage for less premium. Uh, and it, it was also a matter of changing companies, but even with the uh, incumbent company, there was still a decrease. Um, um, the payroll information as well um, that he put on the application 
was, it seems to me that he put down just for regular time, not including overtime. So um, this year, we took the total payroll plus the overtime and corrected that amount. Um, but still, the overall increase of $1,400 is negligible. Um, but that will be correct going forward. So it was obvious based on history, payroll history that I saw through accounts uh, and applications um, that he was using just regular payroll, not including okay. overtime. So it's it's caught up, it's accurate. It doesn't have a big, it's not a driving factor for the annual premium, but at least now it's kind of up to speed. Um, the, I have premium history here um, and the bid process and the quotes that we went through last year. Um, um, Judith wanted me to bring up the uh, values on the properties and the buildings um, that we have. Um, she does sign off on a few documents. That's one of them. The other is just for our records, uh, a list of drivers. Oh, a yeah. list of, yeah, and that just confirms the information that we're sending and is accurate. Right. And we, we know it is, we've already checked it all recently. Um, so the building values range, you know, depending on the construction of the buildings. Um, of course, we also have, you know, structures and not buildings, tanks and so forth that have a value. No. Um, those are somewhat difficult to come up with a value on, um, other than just knowledge of yeah, what we those. We have a new water tank. That's a good uh, benchmark is, is to what it costs for a new tank and then take a look at all the values of the other ones and decide if you want to change those older ones. I mean, we're talking about some tanks that are uh, in the 50s, um, you know, some pump stations from the 30s and so forth. So whether or not you really want to put current replacement costs on those, you can. It may not be, you know, reasonable to... To do so, but um, there's also a, there should be probably a discussion of risk. Like, you would put, it, it, we'd be in trouble if we had a catastrophic event where we lost everything at once. Right. We have this, as I understand it, an umbrella type coverage where if we lost the pump station and the, we we still have more money available. So the total, um, uh, it's not an umbrella. We'll call it a blanket property value. Okay. Um, Ten million. This was last year's. This was Mr. Garen's uh, from last year. Uh, ten million. It was ten million. It's, it's higher than that. Ten million. Last year it was ten two. Yes. And this year it went up four percent, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so the buildings go up four percent. Their contents also go up four percent. Okay. The total is. Um, Ten million six hundred and some thousand. I don't know why it's not sure. Um, here it is. Yes. That's in addition to the individual for each building. I believe so. That's why. That's why I guess. No, no that's, it's it's a blank in yeah. for all. So oh, okay. so if it's the likelihood of the likelihood of every single property, every single building being damaged at once. I shouldn't say that after we just witnessed in, oh, in yeah. other states. Yeah. But in the, you, you'd be talking about a, a loss like that where every single building and every single property would have to go before you'd reach that blanket limit of 2,608,000. So if it's found that one of the buildings that we may have at 416,000 would cost 500,000 to rebuild, we have you'd have it because you'd revert back to this blanket limit. Um, but it's always kind of a good thing to keep in the back of your head is that if there was some freak incident where every single property or single building were to damage, would you be able to rebuild every single structure for for that ten million uh, six hundred thousand? The filter plan alone would exceed that. The all right, right. So um, but, but there may be some change I mean technology changes no, there may be some things that you wouldn't do again. Well, you wouldn't build a blue right. stone building with 18 inch thick walls. Right. Right. And there'd be some things that you would need to do. Um, right, no, so, but I mean, right. just a gallon for an 8 million, eight million gallon water treatment plant, you're probably talking in excess of $10 million. That's right. just the way you think of it. Even if you put it in a metal butler building. Um, so, Mr. Guerin's increases are 
are not a bad thing. Um, premium wise, they don't really drive it. But if you want to think about the savings in premium um, from uh, from the prior term, I think it was somewhere around thirteen thousand. So you always have that to I don't want to say play with, but if you did want to increase the property. Um, coverages uh, at some point. I can tell you that the property coverage premium uh, is 11,000 of 61,000. Uh, the liability is more the driving cost. So um, there's a rate that in there somewhere. You do the math and say if you wanted to increase the total blanket mm -hmm. limit to twice the amount, you're talking, I don't know exactly, but if you want to take a guess and say it's another 10,000, you're still below the premium that you were right. before the bid process. So it's something to Or is it a risk that, that you know you've been assuming that you've you never know. added and, and never is it, it worth right. continuing, yeah. So and that's really um, the discussion I wanted to bring up tonight. It's yeah, where the risks are. Yeah. I mean it's it's good to prepare for both. It's good to prepare for a loss that may happen and it's good to prepare for rate increases that every company is going to have so it's you know you take it as we've saved this money we know in five or ten years that because of everything that's going on there could be rate increases across the board with every carrier so we're putting that money away now for when those rate increases happen I like that. or do we think about you know um, the new water tank you, you know exactly what the cost would be on that so um, you'd want to look at the individual values for for the other ones and and, and judge off that and, and see if you'd want to increase it. Um, but that can happen at any time during the policy term. It doesn't happen ha have to happen at renewal. Okay, so we could renew, then have this discussion, sure. get some real numbers. You, you right. could give, give us some... Not yeah, there's going to be a rate for every $1,000 right. in value. Right, and, you could, and, and we, could, yeah, we could provide some scenarios so you can do that. <laughs> um, I just highlighted a number of things. Um, there's really only two questions I have. One is um, last year we were provided with a letter and it looked like a report from 2016 on status of the Cooper Dam. Yeah. And has there been anything done since then? Uh, an initial report. There, I mean, uh, there were a, lot, a number of recommendations made, and there, it was basically uh, the consultant's direct response that. Um, there's been presentations by uh, Schnabel um, to the commissioners, and everyone's evaluating the options at the, at the time. And I can go with that answer again. This and, year, and, I, and I think yes, that that is an accurate answer. And I think that that um, based on our conversations with the DEC, we will be providing them with a schedule for beginning of construction in the next couple of months. Okay. They're not overly concerned about it. Otherwise, they would have. Yeah, no, no, and, and that's truly really the answer. No quote if yeah, we're. Um, that's a discussion for later in the agenda. But yes. Um, the other. Oh, here's one. And so, really, my only two uh, questions were: Are any changes at this time needed for that statement of values, the building properties, the the equipment properties, and so forth, um, or not? We just leave the values as they are, and since there's nothing, no movement on any um, improvements or any additional reports to the dam, we just answer not at this time and move on. Mm -hmm. um, we discussed the payroll change and the issue with that, that over time is to be included. Uh, the vehicle changes, and those are just going to happen all the time anyway throughout the policies uh, term. Um, so you know that every year, I think Selective was only a 2% inflation increase on buildings, but Trident is 4 okay. and that seems to be more accurate with where pricing is going. Um, that can always be checked over time so it doesn't get ahead of itself and also doesn't fall behind. Um, that's kind of uh, loss runs. I have loss runs print out, printed out. Um, uh, there were two recent ones, um, recent going back to before July, a damaged hydrant that is still in the works. We're getting a value on that, I think, or we do have one. And then a trip and fall, which uh, clearly uh, we uh, issued a denial letter, turned that over to the um, homeowner. Mm -hmm. 
they had a, um, a box, the pipe coming out of the curb box. box. Curb box. It's it was above the sidewalk and. And it belongs to the property owner. Property owners requiring for maintenance of the sidewalk and any any right. features right. as per the city and the water department. But when it says water on it, right, we get the plan. Of course, not everyone gets named. Uh, and the hydrants, vehicles hit our hydrants. It, right, and there's been a couple of those uh, recently. Yeah. yeah, I mean, especially in the winter time. But um, we end up, you know, if we if we get a police report, which more often than not we do, sometimes they're a hit and run. We don't. Then we handle them out. Takes the police report, contacts the insurance agent. We get an estimate on the repair. And we get reimbursed. Right. So it's pretty straightforward. So that's all I I really have. The okay. the renewal premium, like I said, is. Um, $1,419.08 above last year. Um, that's about $6,000 lower than um, what the prior company's bid was for, uh, proposal was for last year, uh, and probably about twelve or 13000 where below where selected. So even with that little bit of an increase, it's still. Uh, we're still, we're the still, bid still the, the bid process. So. We do that every few years. And we changed the, um, this is actually wrong. Um, you can have this copy um, for your records of the renewal quote. Okay. Um, at some point I will need a signature on that. Signatures so where all these are marked. I can leave them with you and then come back another day and pick them up. The colors don't mean anything. I just ran out of certain colors. So. Um, but the, it's not correct in here. We have Hartford for the. Commercial crime. No, it's correct. Because um, they're higher rated. Um, I think that was a, Mr. Garen's choice last year is to go to the. That's why there's only a di the difference of one company. Yes, I remember that now right. you say that. Right. And two years ago we discussed the um, yeah. um, data and um, um, commercial crime <coughs> policies being valuable. Um, the process is still people can make payments online for water bills or yes yes yeah. and that's all run through to third party third party there's so a we state have we have absolute and in right. our current environment we switched vendors did we not no we're still with the original vendor we are yes. did did Kyle get the assurances that they complied with all the yes yeah that was an issue and, and so now we have the paperwork that they're in compliance with all the you know, cybersecurity stuff that they have to be in compliance with. And, right, and I would always suggest, as with any public entity or um, utility, obtain the certificates. We don't necessarily need copies unless the carrier asks us to get them, but um, keep them free. Kyle, Kyle got, got a hold of those. He has those, so we, we could have those if, if they were requested. Um, we, we retain no credit card information in our system whatsoever. In fact, we won't even, if a person, we won't even accept that information over the phone and, you know, run it for people. No, you got, we'll talk you through it on the phone. Because, you know, some people have a harder time following those instructions on how to do it. And Jane, Jane and Kevin have been on the phone with people trying to talk them through it, but we stopped short of getting any credit card information. Okay. So I'll leave these with you, pick them up at sure. another time. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions about the values? And we can look at them down the road, but for now, is it all right just to proceed with the renewal with everybody? I would think so. Can I have that renewal increase for mine? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Count. Mine was slightly <laughs> higher. I bet. I bet. Well, you're covering slightly more things. <laughs> I think. Do, do we need a motion to accept? There was, just before, um, there was discussion. Um, we ran into an issue last year with the uh, purchase of a property on First Avenue that had a piece of equipment on it. Uh, and it came to light that, I think I asked here. It was not water dependent. And it, the final determination was it wasn't water. But um, it's one of those things where you have a piece of equipment on private property. But it's never listed on the statement of values because it's not a quote water department property or a city-owned property. Our equipment was where? It 
it's not no one we didn't no one no, really knew no. we had to, it wasn't it wasn't ascertained that it was our equipment right it's, oh. it's just one thing to keep in mind that if you did have property uh, a piece of equipment um, pump station or so forth uh, even at the small station I know some other municipalities in the county do on private property that you notify us so that we can list that as a location so the liability can extend okay. to I'm that. I'm not aware that we have it. Because it just came up, right. oh, where, where did this come from? And no one ever thought, oh, we better think about where we have equipment scattered around town on other people's property, whether there's an easement or not. We should have that listed. Yes. Right. So it's okay. one of those things where it, go, right. it goes on forever until something pops up and we all discover it. But it's not as though coverage would have been denied or anything. Um, that was it. Okay. Any further questions? How much liability coverage will we care on? Uh, do you pay? No. Or how much? Does this cover the uh, general liability for yes. us? Yes. How much uh, coverage that is available? Uh, there is a... So there is underlying general liability and then there's a commercial umbrella as well, right? So I think it's five. So there's a $3 million aggregate, $1 million occurrence, and then the um, umbrella excess or umbrella is, I believe, five. Five, Hmm? Do you think that's enough for uh, five million dollars? Well, it is um, in a way because our it's liability ten. on our ten. Ten. Okay. is ten. Those our ten. properties, the title to our properties is the city of Kingston. And so there's a government immunity? Well, notwithstanding, I mean, if you had a catastrophe or something, that would apply. But the, the situation is that a city of Kingston property, we carry our basic coverage for that property. But the full faith and credit and the city's policy is overlying over and above that. Okay. So there's more than adequate insurance available. Okay. You didn't want to hear that, did you? I, what, <laughs> I, what I heard him say was that the water department's going to help chip in to pay my liability insurance. <laughs> That's what I heard. We how, pay, how, about, how about the city requires the water department to carry equal limits to the city? No, we carry enough to really to cover it, probably any foreseeable event. Okay. Okay. And that's why we pay for it. We don't just rely on the city's right. policy. We have our own policy. It's, 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 so there will never be a claim against the city's policy to affect their rates. Our right. policy would cover that. Perfect. But they're not equal to ours. The water department is at least equal to the city's. So. Okay, then that's, that's, that's the answer to my question. So we're there, right? Right. Okay. okay. We're good. Thank you, John. And that, that extends over the all the underlying coverages. The, the order. resolution for yeah, the oh, exactly. What are you doing? Renewing insurance policies. Yes. Okay. Yes. We need a resolution. We need a resolution to accept. To accept policies proposed. Renewal. So moved. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Accepted. Passed. Did you have anything for me? No, we discussed everything. I can share your vision on whatever we have here. All right. I will sign that tomorrow, <coughs> and I can have somebody drop it up to you if you want. Or we'll let you know when it's here, and you can decide that. This is the only thing you need for me to sign, though, right? Well, right now? where it's marked on it. Right, no, I understand that. Um, no, I'd like to get out. Okay, so that's fine. Awesome. I'll, I'll let you know when, when it's ready, and okay. we'll have it here, and you can buy it whenever you want. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. No, Thank you, John. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the board. <laughs> I feel like the flag was in the office. Okay. <laughs> Very good. For, for a uh, department? Okay. Because she was an emergency service department. Okay. Take care. Okay. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Probably not me either. So. All right, next on the agenda is the skate assistant. Um, we're moving along on it. We, we have DOH approval. 
conceptually, they, they reviewed our plans and specs and they're good to go. The only thing that they're waiting on, and, and it's something that I'm working with uh, Bruno Larios to obtain, is since this funding was acquired, was obtained through the storm mitigation loan fund, we have to give them elevation certificates that none of this stuff is going to be put in harm's way in the flood zone. Kind of makes a little bit of sense. So uh, Debbie and I put together the list of all the properties, section block and lots, its physical addresses, and um, Chris L. Bernier Larios, um, he's not sure, he doesn't think he's going to have to survey any. Most of it can be done through GIS and, and, um, and some of their programs. Um, one of them is already done. We had to do this for the generator at Foxhall, and I already have that certificate, of, of elevation certificate. So, it, and once once DOH has that, then they're going to sign off on the plans, and that means that we'd be able to go to bid and start and get this project, you know, really going. Well. So. Yeah, it, 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 I'm kind of excited about that. Okay, next on the agenda is thin water UPS installation project. Okay, included in your board packet, you have a recommendation of award for the installation work. As you know, we broke that project in two bids. One was to directly purchase the equipment. That recommendation was in the previous month's packet, and that was a recommendation to award the actual purchase of the UPS equipment to WaveTech Associates, and that amount is $42,987, and that's a Mitsubishi unit. And then Erase Electronics was the low bidder at $58,500 to do the install. Um, that is above the estimate that uh, CDI presented to us originally, and I have a call into him to ask, you know, if he has any explanation for that. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what that, that, that explanation is. I'm also a little bit concerned, although a race's bid is very close. I think he, Al, correct me if I'm wrong, but what did he say the install would be? The, the installation. copy site? Yeah. Uh, he said the install would be 20000 Right, and it's 58.5. But that also includes the... Uh, the uh, work associated with the um, code violation. Right. Fire so, code. Right. And so to combined, he probably isn't that far off of his estimate. However, the other individual that bid on this job bid 118000 And so when I see such dis mm -hmm. disparate bids like that, I kind of get nervous. Um, but I really do think that, you know, a race looked at the job and He's done other work for us, and the engineer, you know, he quit past muster with them, and I'm very comfortable with them doing the work. So I would recommend that we make both awards tonight to Wave Tech Associates for the purchase of the equipment and for a race for the installation. Okay, you need a motion on the board? Okay, I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the bid from Wave Tech for the uh, purchase of the system, the UPS system. And uh, to erase for the uh, installation, it's not to exceed 58.5. Al, do you want to do in separate motions? I, I or don't, you don't I, care. I, I think a combination is okay. fine. All right, that's fine. So wave tech is wave tech is how much? Forty-two thousand nine hundred eighty-seven dollars, even. The bid's actually right. Al has the exact amount. I do, yes. And um, erase is fifty-eight thousand five hundred for the installation. We have a second on that? Sorry. Second by Harold. All in favor? Aye. 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 Cooper Lake Improvements. We, um, as you guys know, we had a meeting with DEC. With Dennis and I met Greg DeVero and went up to DEC headquarters to talk to them about the Cooper Lake Dam and the schedule and the letter we got that we asked to meet with them at the same time they said, your schedule's a little overdue. So uh, we had a couple of, so the DEC is very insistent that we must provide them with a schedule of when this work is going to be done. Um, and um, Greg and I and Dennis probably agree, and hopefully everyone else does, it's probably best to do that in the context of a special meeting, where that's the mm -hmm. only focus, and that Greg can come down and kind of give you a brief review of where we are, 
because he can come down and give you a schedule, but, we, but the board has to decide what project we're designing. Mm -hmm. um, talked a little bit about funding with uh, DEC. Um, we, we are all in agreement that parts of this project could be funded, the drinking water parts, the outfalls, and some of the other work could potentially be funded through um, the DWS or Rope Loan Fund. So that's not free, not a grant, but it's certainly lower cost than a market bond. They also suggested that at least one dam was funded through the SAM grants. Mm -hmm. You're aware of what they are. Mm -hmm. so, SAM grants are, they've been around since 2013, and they're the old member items. You know, yeah. Member items have gone away. Mm -hmm. No, they haven't. They're called SAM grants, State Municipal Facility Grants. Um, I kind of did a deep dive through the SAM grants because I wanted to learn more about them. Um, since 2000, and, and there's a report online available. DASNI administers these grants. Has, um, you have to get them either through an assemblyman, a senator, or the executive. So they are member rights. <coughs> um, they've given over $500,000, $500 million away since 2013. I have a list of all the projects if you're really curious. I think there's one on there that we know in Kingston, probably. There's none in Kingston. Oh, really? None. And that was as of August 21st. Hmm. But it may not have been, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, so um, I kind of took a little deep dive in there. and. As you can well imagine, most of them come from the executive. Anything over a million dollars almost certainly comes through that venue. There's a couple around a million, but they're SUNY Poly. They're the um, uh, Upstate Nano. They're, they're, they're the Buffalo Million. They're, they're, you can identify those for big ticket items. If you back those out, there's 1,112 grants that have been given, according to this report, since. Uh, 2013. Um, if you back out anything over a million dollars, and there's only 40 of those, 18 of them came out of the governor's office. Um, the average grant is 128 million, 128,000. And so when I looked at, they gave to Tuxedo Park in Orange County $100,000. I said, well, what kind of a dam is that? And then I realized that I actually called down there, and their project was a 3.5 million dollar project. But they, they got through their senator or assembly, and they at least got enough money to do some of their engineering. So that may be something we would like to pursue through our assembly and our senator, at least some small funding for that. Anyway, um, not a lot of money has come our way. There's 38 water supply projects, a lot of fire trucks on there, a lot of fire trucks. And there's new LED lights in a Little League field in the Bronx. And that was like over a million dollars. Just mind boggling when you look at it. Ed Sullivan Theater got five million dollars. Somebody had five. That's great. I just so 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 we did talk about that. So there, there are some funding mechanisms, and essentially, the DEC is well aware that that's an that's something that's very needed, and, and more of this work will be done, and that that's a big obstacle for municipalities. So we could have another meeting and really kind of flush out with DEC kind of yeah. a timeline. Yeah. Once we have it and, and choose a project, because exactly. that will then determine the timeline. Right. And so we're, we were looking, I think I sent out an email, we're looking at dates to accommodate everybody. Um, Greg gave me some dates, I think the 25th of September may be the date that I know was a year available, year available. And you get like I a five. Gave it, I gave it to you. Yeah. You did, you did. Yeah. What, what, what time are we talking about? Well, it's you can't, Monday. Um, Monday, but you can't be here till five. Um, and that's I can, you know, I can be here earlier just because it's the beginning of the year. I don't have a whole bunch of stuff going on yet. Okay. So I could probably be here at four. Okay. That's, I mean, I don't want to, you know, that's a long mm -hmm. ride you got. $500 million out of that one for your new roof at your school. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw that. I was like, ooh, I know. Yeah. So we we say, need it. Did we say then four o'clock on the 25th? Is that what? That works for me. Okay. With you know, we'll be done by six probably. Sure. 
We can be. I mean, I, you know. I have another and, meeting. Well, and, and that would be good for me because Greg can go on. He's a college professor. Okay. Don't take that the wrong way. Um, I heard that. I know, mm -hmm. I know, but but he so he sometimes goes deeper than you maybe really want. So it's the twenty fifth to four o'clock. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's shoot for five forty five. Yes. Okay. I'm there. Okay, good. And then, so that's all I have on Poo Poo Lake. Um, now with this business that they have with the storms and the hurricanes and all that. Yeah. And the money that's supposed to go government funds to this, how is that going to affect us? It won't affect us now at this time, but eventually right down the line. I, I mean the FEMA money? Yeah. I think it's going to affect all of us. It's, <laughs> it's got to be paid for somehow. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but I mean I don't I think the good news was there weren't any dams that failed. I know they were looking at Okeechobee and a few others, and they, you know. So I, I don't think there's there's going to be any. I don't think there's anything coming out of this. But it may be too soon to tell. I don't know. Um, I know down in Florida, a lot of those water mains got ripped out of the ground because they're very shallow when the trees went over, and that's caused a lot of water to breaks. Yeah, I think on on the Keys, their whole infrastructure was completely wiped out. Yeah. Their water comes from Miami. Yes. I mean, from Florida, so it comes down like that long pipeline. And there's a Florida Keys Authority, and they put out a call to the mutual, through the mutual aid system for 10 crews, 10 four person crews to get down there. Because it, as these trees went over, the pipes just got ripped out of the ground. Right. And a lot of their tree, a lot of their, because it's so warm, they were right, they hang them right on the side of the bridges. So when the bridges went out, the water went out. And their sewage systems were failed. And <sighs> You know, they lost. I mean, almost all their infrastructure. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. It's pretty, pretty sad. Pretty sad. So, imagine when you're going to be back to normal. Just how long is going to take? So, the mutual aid group in New York. What we're doing is we're having a fundraiser, a beer tasting fundraiser, so we can send them money because we know it's too far to send crews. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to have as much fun doing that as. Let me answer a question. So you want to put together a schedule of work mm -hmm. without the funding. Yes, that's so, so, and So what good is it? Well, their position is you have to do the work. But if you can't find the funding... Well, the funding is available as a bond. It just goes, the impact the is that's going to be horrendous. Right. Okay. So, uh, on, so I think our goal will be to find as much grants and, and a mix of monies mm -hmm. from places where we can limit that impact on the ratepayers. And, and, and so, I mean, but they were very clear that the position is, it's time to okay. do this. Okay. Now, Greg can tell you it can take X amount of months to design this project, and then, you know, so I mean, that's the kind of schedule. And, and they've always shown us, they've always, that branch of the DEC, they've always been very accommodating to a reasonable request to extend the schedule. So, you know, if you keep them informed, so I think it, it would be a good starting place. Okay, so we're, so we're going to talk about On the, the, the right. scope of the work. Yes. You know, a two foot, you know, increase or a five foot increase. Yeah, you, you, yeah. And then how we proceed to pay for it. A mix of grants or, or, yes, and yes. bonds. Right, right. And, and I think we need to, you know, shake those trees a little bit out there. Okay. Do we need any kind of? I mean, I think we when we I think we, we can make a decision whether we're going to adjourn this meeting and reconvene on the twenty fifth. I think it's probably cleaner to just end this meeting and just call for a special, special meeting on that. I mean, right. don't, don't we do agree? Al? It's yes. easier on your end. Yes. Okay. Okay. So a special meeting will be September twenty fifth at four o'clock. Yep. Correct. Your okay. talk. And when we do our notice for special meeting, then that's you have to indicate the topic you're going to speak about, and that's all you can speak and about. And you'll send these out again. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And I'll ask. Actually, I'm going to ask Greg to send out maybe his presentation so everybody can look it over ahead of time. That would be perfect. Yeah, because then you can. There's, go a, there's a lot to digest. There is. Yeah. There's an awful lot, and I'm going to. I have his whole presentation, but I, I really want him to tighten it down because I don't need to know how he came up with those numbers. 
No, you said he can, he can talk for three or four hours. Yeah. Right? So you want to tell him maybe he's got an hour technical and the yeah. rest is the board discuss, discuss the money. Right. Yeah. Tell me it's an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. I'm going to tell him he has, <laughs> I'm going to tell him he has 45 and then he'll go an hour. You're right. probably talking a three year project. Yeah. Yeah, you're not talking about something that's going to be up as quick and generous as that is. Not going to be that quick. Not three years between design and construction. The secret process could take a year. If, if, some, and if somebody uh, yeah. in the secret process, somebody hmm. objects to it being the law. Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay, next on the agenda is transmission main project. Um, we're waiting on the easement, uh, the appraisal work that Bill asked, um, that we authorized last month. And he said it would take four weeks to get that to him. He this, he's about that mark. Um, and I'm, I'll give Dwayne a call tomorrow and see what his ETA is on that. Um, then I think Bill will, will, Bill will approach the property owners once he has a valuation for what that land is worth. And then we'll see if we can negotiate an easement. Would that affect our insurance? Might once the, once the infrastructure's in there, you know, where the transmission mains are. Because it would be, we're doubling the, number, the amount of mains we have, it might, you know. So you're, might. you're the same to the policy. Yeah, it's, you know, not a... Okay, lagoon sludge removal. That starts August 25th. You got a date between the time I wrote my report and the time I... It's moving along. So we're doing. A, we, we've got our new speedies permit from DEC, and we haven't heard word one uh, from them based on our what we submitted to them as our report, which is, I view that as very good news. September, right? I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, September. I'm moving on August 25th. Okay. That'd be a year from now. Yeah, I thought it started already. Yeah, no, no, it started September 25th. Um, it will start. Okay. So then would they take it down to New Jersey something? They're taking it down to, yes, because the folks that came up to actually do the chemical assay of what was in the sludge, just to confirm it, was the guys from the Passaic Valley Water Authority. That's where they're taking it. Well, all three companies that bid on this are New Jersey companies around Passaic Valley. That's where the, that's where the, all these companies are headquartered, so that's where they want. And, and they, they're the only really water, wastewater plant that's probably big enough to deal with this. They use this, they find this sludge to be beneficial for their process. Yeah, there's a lot of environmental uh, companies in New Jersey for some reason. Mm -hmm. It must be just the rules mm -hmm. that they do part business. They also had all that cleanup. Oh, there. just so partly it's all the oil companies. Partly it's the, 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 the old industrial the chemical companies. companies. Yeah. 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 Like a smell of the turnpike. Huh? You could smell on the turnpike. You remember you go through and say you said roll up your windows. <laughs> Not anymore. So much. Not so much. Not so still, much. Go through Linden, you could smell it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. All right. Large meter on it. It's in progress. We're two, 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 two and a half days into it. Found a couple that are reading low. Uh, several that are, you know, intolerances. And so, um, they, that should be done in, by the end of the next week or so. We had the Freeman put a little article in just so that people wouldn't, you know, they'd see him around, they'd see our people with him, and they wouldn't think, you know, that we were doing something untoward. We're not going to anybody's house. We're just, you know, these are all scheduled appointments with large institutions. We're doing all the, all the city schools starting at 4 a.m. on Saturday. That means overtime for our people. Our people aren't going to be there. It's just this is the Johnson Controls guys are going to be there. They, and these these guys, that's how they work. They, that's how they work with everybody. It's like so we we don't have to be on board with them. No, if they run into a problem, they'll call us, and we'll have somebody on call. But no, no, they they started five o'clock this morning at the Benedictine, and they, we weren't there. No, this has been they're pretty good at what they do. Correspondence. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. So I have a couple of additions to, to the minutes that are pretty quick. If you want me to do those, if you want me to do those after the superintendent's report, it's up to you. Okay. Um, yesterday, remember we talked about the roundabout 
um, and how they were going to, the DOT was yes. coming in to restructure the roundabout. Well, just to see what it would cost, they want us to improve all our infrastructure. Um, $1.1 million. We don't have to make a decision. You got a copy of this, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it now. Right. And um, um, the contract is a little off putting in the sense that um, we have to, they issue the contract if the bids come in higher than their estimates, which is always a possibility. Um, then within 45 days, we'd have to give them the balance of the money, that kind of thing. So there's some things. We don't have to make a firm decision in, until June of next year. So we have some time. Um, if we say no, then we're going to be in there on top of all the new work fixing the stuff because cities are going to put the sewers in there at that time. So they're going to be under us. We're going to be here, and then they're going to be pounding on top of this. Mm -hmm. Those water mains are going to break. Almost like they have a gun to our head saying, mm -hmm. you got to do this now. Or else. Or else. Yeah. I mean, we do have a choice, but it's not a good one. So you, have, you don't have a choice. You don't, but I, but I think that, um, I think Bill, when I asked Bill to look this over, because obviously there's a, you know, we don't, I'm not asking anybody to make a decision on this tonight. But um, there, there's some legal documents here. And I've been told, I don't know if you, what you've been told, but they're engineering this all in house. Yeah. And we can choose to not have it engineered by them so we can deduct 15% off of that. That's not but, a good choice. But if anyone's ever worked with DOT. No, it's, 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 it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. So th again, they're not really giving us a choice. Mm -hmm. But Bill pointed out, I, he, why are we paying, if they're in-house engineers doing the work, why are we paying them? We're state taxpayers, we already paid them. Maybe that's an argument we could put forth through, you yeah. know. Well, and we also, I think the nice thing is, is that we did this so early that we now have a year to continue to work, because we did meet with Kevin. I think you, you met with Kevin. I did, I did. And, and and so, you know, we have a year to potentially work our sources to see if, it jointly, I mean, because my bill was six hundred thirty-five thousand or so. Yours was one point one million. So we're basically looking at over a two million dollar right. project. Maybe there's some opportunity to get some additional state assistance. I help. think those same grants might be way up. Right. So there's could be an opportunity. Yeah, and I think we need to do that because they think that they've gone to DOT on our behalf. Yeah. And they very sternly told them we need help, and they think this is the help. <clears throat> now, is this project actually going to happen? The roundabout yeah, get built? They're moving ahead. Like, it's being built. <laughs> okay. They so, believe it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, they're really, I mean, from their end, um, they have a few more steps that they need to take, but I mean, they have full project approval. They have yeah. the money budgeted. They're going out to bid in June of next year. And that's, so, you know, they're. Their plan is to, to move the project. All the forward. community approvals are in place, and they they don't need any. They don't need any. Okay. And so you know, back in twenty twelve, they got the common council's um, approval um, that the common council was in support of doing uh, or, or, of a pro of doing the project there, and that's all they needed. Um, mm -hmm. And since then, they've met with the community. You know, there's been some concerns. They're going to continue. They're having some more community meetings this fall to try to work out. Uh, you know, they've tried to make some concessions about moving the road away from some of the historic homes, you know, try to be able to make it a better pedestrian, and you know, flow. Um, but there's, uh, at this point, you know, I think we all attest to that the intersection needs updating. Um, and so they, this is how they plan on doing it, which again, you know, we're lucky that there are many other intersections in Kingston that are not DOTs intersection that we all locally would have to pay for. Um, so at least this one, um, this project, for the most part, is being paid from, from their, our, our coffers still, um, but being yeah. paid from, you know, at least the state sure. pool. Uh, but, yeah. So this is, I was, this is the last meeting, this is at, at the Albany Avenue end of Chancellor. Yes. yes. Mm. Not the big roundabout. Right, yes. Yeah. So, so they're going to be building. No, this is the little roundabout, roundabout. so yeah. this is going to be a, and so we're going to be using the infrastructure underneath. Is the five okay. corner thing still on their map, too? They, um, yes. so eventually, so as part of our uptown transportation study that we did, um, we talked about the Fair and Greenkill Avenue um, intersection 
um, as the potential for another right. you know right. improvement um, flopping wall and fair. So it's still it's still a study. There's no money to implement to this okay. that at this point. Where once this study was done with the implementation of you know state DOT dollars. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's have to find the money. It's oh. just a reallocation of resources. That It'll be interesting to see how the pedestrian walkway will be. Yeah, a lot of people good. walk. Mm -hmm. They do. Yeah, me included. They do. I go uptown, I'll walk. They do. Yeah. You also get a very upgraded, you know, you'll upgrade your system there. This is some of our oldest water mains. Yeah, we so have water mains. The very first water tap was right there over the hump on Albany yeah. Avenue. So, mean, so, so it is a plus to us. That right, we, but we, there's no issue with the infrastructure right now. So, right. But, but eventually, yeah, we would be, be doing the same project. Right. It's just the timing when it's mm -hmm. kind of there's an opportunity for us to spend the money now when we might need it more yeah. to be put to better use someplace else. But um, just based on my experience, I know that what's going to happen is as soon as they leave, I mean, this happens every time they replace a sewer. It's, no, it's, 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 there's no, I mean, it's, it's what always has to happen. They fix the sewer, and we have water in it because it's all the compaction and the settling and the movement, and, you know, it, it just, it just what happens. It's life in an old city. Yeah. But this would be just kind of a really big problem. Okay. So, um, our audit, um, we, we're, we've completed our audit. Uh, we're waiting on the final, so I can present it to all you, you folks. Um, <laughs> the financials are done. Are, is that correct, Al? Draft financials. Yes, and there, but there's no changes really that we see in those financials. Correct. And I've written my report. What we're waiting on is a report, a bills letter, and um, he's going to be doing it, but he like to wait till we resolve one issue so we can write this opinion letter that there's no legal entanglements once we resolve a certain issue. And so, um, but John, but John, the city needs our report to incorporate in theirs. So I'd like your permission to give him ours as a draft for discussion purpose only so his auditors can continue with his work without, you know, otherwise the city, their, their auditors issue a finding that says we have no opinion on the water department. And that's not a, they should have an opinion because right. we have an audit and it came out pretty well. So. so you, do you need a resolution? No, I just wanted to let everybody know. No. Normally I would not give any document like that to anybody um, without giving it to you first because okay. it's still in draft form. And, and so um, I'll, I, I told John I'd ask to see if you know I could do that. And I said I didn't see a whole lot of problems. No, I don't see a problem. Now he's, they're, they're, no. his auditors are going to use it internally and then they're going to they're going to take our information. It's going to be incorporated into theirs, and they're signing their documents. Not ours. So it's okay. Okay. So we don't need a motion. No. no. I don't think so. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow we're going to do a little drill in, 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 in a little um, with our managers about well, we're, we're in the process of doing our vulnerability assessments and our emergency response plans anyway this year. They have, they're due into the state by the end of the year, and um, we're going to have a little tabletop discussion on what happens if. You know, the whole area loses power and we lose um, parts of the planet some floods and kind of Harvey at Irma sort of scenario. Mm -hmm. Should be a fun discussion, I think. Kind of scary, but mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and I ask, we, we need to update our regulations and we're kind of in progress and you know, I've been kind of bad about getting them done, but Jay brought an issue to my attention the other day that I, I'd like you guys to think about. Um, somebody comes in and we make a tap for them. So there's a hole in the water main. There's, you know, at least to the curb. And they wait a year, two years before they put anything up. We've got a liability and exposure out there. We're not getting a blessed penny from it. So I'd like us to maybe consider that from the day you make the tap, you have a year to put a meter. Because a meter is what triggers the account and the billing. Mm -hmm. And then maybe if it's six months or a year, and maybe that um, if you don't have your project done for one reason or another, you have three options. You either install a meter, you disconnect the tap, which means digging up the road, which probably isn't a great idea in most places, um, especially where we've overlaid. 
Um, what were you just paying minimum bill? We send you a bill for a minimum bill, and, and that's the incentive to push you forward mm -hmm. and finish your project. Yeah. Um, she has two or three of them. Jane keeps track of them. She goes, what do you want me to do with these? They, we made it, made it top a year ago, and you know, there's nothing. It's still vacant property. Mm -hmm. So they're going to leak. I mean, they all do at some yeah. point. I mean, we're not going to know where they are. We're gonna, in five years, nobody's going to remember that they're there. So. We're just <coughs> charging the extra assessment on it. That's we would just charge them the minimum bill. If you have a three-quarter inch line, we're going to assume you're going to have a three-quarter inch meter, and that minimum bill is, what, $44? Forty four dollars and forty four sixty seven A month. A quarter. A quarter. A quarter. A quarter. I don't know how can anybody complain about that. Well, and at least it, it, it keeps us aware that that exists That's out there. Right. Mm -hmm. No, you say don't forget it. And, and we're getting some revenue from having that exposure. All right. And, so we've um, got to dig it back up again later. And, and it's in our system. Well, it's, I, it's I, in our system. I can't see how anybody's going to complain. They might. <laughs> but that's okay. But when they do, just give them Harold's number. Yeah. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Harold wouldn't <laughs> believe that anyone could complain. I uh, hear you. And I don't often get real. You're lucky that's all it is. <laughs> right. I think either option one or three is good. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree with you. Right. Redigging up the road. It, is, you know, yeah. 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 I don't think anybody else. They're paying for the tap. They pay us to make the tap. Okay. So it's like $300 to make a three quarter inch tap. Right. And we give you everything but the copper. When we come out and we do the work, you dig the hole. So if you just tell people in advance, here's what the story is, okay. then you know, okay. if you want it, this is what it's going to be. Okay. And if, if they have a problem, call me. No, there you go. No, I don't Why would they do it so far in the bank? <laughs> or if they Someone is sure they're going to finish. Some of it's spec. You know, like I'm going to have two pieces of property and I'm going to build a house here and I build that one. There's one on Gilead Street, that's exactly what happened. They, they, they built that spec house, it hasn't sold, and the other one, they made the tax at the same time. They haven't built anything. Well, they built one house, and it's been on the market, the but the other yeah. house is, and the, but the tax is They're optimists. Mm -hmm. You got to be, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I said developers work. You're developing and building. So, yeah. So if, if nobody has any objection to that, if I have a motion, <coughs> we will you know, make that a, a part of our Routine and then Jane can actually send those letters out to people that you know from this point forward you either do this or this is what's going to happen. Okay, who would like to make the motion? I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a motion for policy change that we charge minimum billing to anyone who has requests the tap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, that hasn't installed a meter in a year. In a year. In a year. That's in a year. time for people to you know build. Put a second. Arrow will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The only other thing, it's just a comment, and when we were coming back from DE, DEC, Dennis asked that we undertake a little mini uh, rate structure kind of review comparison with our neighbors, and so Al's working on that. He's, I don't know where he is on it, but he should be almost done, because I mean, we talked about it, and we added a couple things, and so mm -hmm. by next meeting, we'll kind of send that out. Um, I think Dennis, we'll have that ready for the 25th. Dennis yeah, was, was really looking at where we stacked up to everybody else um, in, in terms of our rates and, and just good information to have. So, sure. yeah, we'll put that to, I'll put that together. We'll, um, so we should have that. So that's all I have. So all thank right. you. Superintendent's report. Any questions? Okay. I miss Dennis. He always has questions. Yep, Dennis will find them. Let me see. Expenses less than budget. That's always good. Yes. <laughs> it's like to see. It's good to see our reservoir being relatively full. We're, we're okay. Yeah, we're, good. We're, good. we're good. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Much better than last year. The year before, yeah, we're mm -hmm. good. We're good. Oh, and the, app, the the filter thirteen is still having issues. You know, it's back having issues again, and but we're I think we're, we'll be all right with it. And there's some we're, we're Central Hudson part of Central Hudson is part of the issue someplace because we keep frying boards and little parts, and we Debbie, God bless her persistence. Um, they're putting a recorder in on our uh, to monitor our uh, the fluctuations in our power. Central Hudson is agreeing to do that, um, and then she kept pushing the the um, instrumentation folks, and turns out there's a setting that it's factory set. It, you know, you have good power, 
but if you, if you set it for you have less than good power, it, it's not as um, susceptible to these 